Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated, our YouTube channel, for our weekly Sunday morning worship time collectively uh, with the Lord. We pray that uh, all is well with you uh, physically and spiritually, and that this sermon will provide you peace, joy, and enduring strength for the remainder of your time here on this planet that we call home and earth one of our homes, our earthly homes. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity, another chance to uh, stand before you in the presence of your people to do this sermon. We pray that you would uh, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Uh, guide us uh, and then touch these words as they leave my lips and before they enter to eat the ears of your people that uh, your thoughts will be conveyed in them. We pray, Father, that you'd give us the heart to receive all that you're trying to give us through your word on this occasion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, uh, something strange is about to take place, something that I've never done in my life. Uh, I preached last week from a subject of woe is me. I'm preaching this week the same sermon, woe is me, from the same text, uh, only uh, uh, hopefully uh, it will be better delivered because I've been going through some things in the last two months that have really been shaking my world. Uh, and last week it kind of culminated, all came to a head, and I, I, I wasn't focused the way that I wanted to be. Uh, this morning is Monday, uh, July 13th, uh, about 6.47 a.m., and uh, spent a lot of time with the Lord last night instead of sleeping, and I'm thankful for it. And uh, so uh, he has given me the okay to do a do-over. And that's what we're going to do. Just a, just a tad bit about what I've been going through. Uh, a skin infection. Uh, uh, something has been attacking my body. I haven't got to the face or the chest, but all over the, my legs and all the way up my back uh, has been uh, just going crazy. And I've been scratching like I was a crazy man and the results have not been pretty. Um, finally uh, got through the process and got scheduled for a dermatologist uh, last Monday. Uh, went for the office visit and the uh, doctor assured me that uh, they would be able to, to give me some comfort and, and figure out what the problem was. At least 95% uh, uh, they were sure that they would be able to help me. Uh, they took a couple of biopsies on my back and sent it off to the labs and came back and uh, by Friday before I talked to them, I was supposed to hear from them Wednesday or Thursday, didn't hear from them. Friday morning I got up and I'm kind of in a panic attack. Uh, and so finally about uh, one or two o'clock I called them and, and they started uh, dis uh, discussing with me what my problem was. I had the... Uh, uh, contact dermatitis, which is a disease that something has, that I'm coming in contact, has been con uh, disrupting my system. Uh, you all that know my wife, uh, know that she went for years eating seafoods and whatnot, fish uh, of all kinds, especially shrimp, and it never bothered her. But then one day out of nowhere, it uh, she, be, she, uh, she developed a, an allergy for it. She was allergic to it, and it would really mess her up. Uh, stuff swelling up and stuff uh, just about instantly, and, and she had to do something quick. And, and so now she stays away from shellfish. Well, my situation was similar to that. I went for years uh, using uh, certain things, uh, that were allowing certain things to come in contact with my body, and it never bothered. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, now my uh, the detergent that uh, Lamona has used for years uh, to wash with 
is all of a sudden attacking my body. And I've been going through that for two months now. Uh, but thank God uh, we're on the right direction. It's clearing up. Uh, I'm not scratching like I was, like a crazy person. Uh, and, and as I used to say in, in my other life or before I was converted, uh, I'm, things are getting on the good foot now. Uh, so the Lord has given me an opportunity to do a do-over, and that's where we're going for now. Uh, last week we talked about Woe is Me from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, and I'll read from the English Standard Version. It reads, uh, verse 5 starts by saying, And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. The King James Version renders lost as undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hands a burning coal that he had taken from, with a tongue from the altar. And he touched uh, my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. And then verse 8 uh, uh, picks up with Isaiah's commission from the Lord, uh, and it says, And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Now, I started out last week by talking about uh, normally there are three transitions in life, and since then I've discovered that life is just filled with many swift transitions. And today uh, we're going to go through some of the transitions that Isaiah the prophet went through before getting to the point where he accept his, accepted his calling. Uh, last uh, Sunday, I talked about the first transition is a period where we move from being non-believers to believers, from being unsaved to being saved, and that's the period uh, called justified or justification. Uh, and then the second transition is surprisingly when we move from pre-conversion or uh, unconverted to being converted. In other words, we... Uh, move from living uh, life without Jesus to living life with Jesus. And that's a process that we're going through learning to live life with Jesus. That's called sanctification. The third transition is when we move from uh, time to eternity or from earth to heaven, from being away from God to being with God. And that's called glorification. Uh, now, uh, from there, I said that the Apostle Paul described it well in his description of the mystery and victory of believers. And I talked a bit, basically from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 57. And I'll just give you a summary of what that's talking about. Uh, uh, Paul gives a, a mystery of uh, life. Uh, uh, as we go through certain transitions uh, from mystery to victory. Uh, he, he talks about uh, perishable and imperishable, bodies that are perishable and imperishable. He says, uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, we uh, will be changed. A trumpet will sound and the, the, as the trumpet sound, the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. And he sums it up with the question, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Now, you might be familiar with the King James Version that says, O oh, grave, where is your victory? And O oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as we go through these transitions, uh, uh, you're going to reach points, hopefully, where you say, aha, I see where you're going. Uh, and this is one of them. 
uh, as we look at Isaiah's life, uh, at some point, you're going to see Jesus start showing up. Now, uh, music scores are something that goes through different transitions in the music. Uh, you have uh, highs and lows and highs and lows. A couple of the first uh, music scores that I ever, I, that I can remember experiencing was the movie of Shaft uh, and the movie of uh, uh, where the uh, guy was the drug pen uh, that uh, Curtis Mayfield did uh, some push a man on it. Uh, you probably recall if you're 50 or so, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we're going to talk about some of life's transitions, especially how they uh, move in and out with uh, Isaiah. And hopefully we can see ourselves in the story. Uh, in, uh, at Brewster's Theological Seminary, one of the things that have always stuck with me that I learned was, he said, use a preaching style of start low, raise high, strike fire, and sit down in the smoke. In other words, transition through your sermon. I'm going to try and put that to practice today. I'm going to try to start low, raise high, strike fire, sit down in the smoke. Now, as we go through this transition of a vision from that Isaiah received, starting at verse 1 in, in chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, high and lifted up, and the train uh, of his robe filled the temple. So it all happened. It, 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 this vision starts with Isaiah when Uzziah died. And it was only when Uzziah died that he saw also the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. The robe of that, uh, the train that was connected to his robe filled the temple. Now, uh, in life, uh, a lot of times uh, we have people positioned in our lives that become our focus point. If we need something, we go to them because we've learned that they are reliable and they will make things happen. So perhaps Isaiah was had that kind of connection with uh, Uzziah. Uh, perhaps when Uzziah was alive uh, and and Isaiah needed a small business loan, uh, he could go to King Uzziah and, and uh, Uzziah would give him a letter of introduction to the local bank banker that would provide him the loan because Uzziah's name opened doors for, uh, King, uh, for uh, the prophet Isaiah. That's just one example of possibility. You know, that, that's something that we can relate to. Uh, perhaps when uh, Isaiah got a little sick uh, under the weather, as we call it. He would go to King Uzziah, and Uzziah would recommend a good doctor for him. Uh, and, and, and Isaiah would go to Uzziah's doctor and uh, uh, get sick. Maybe that's why some of the, uh, uh, especially African-American theologians, uh, put into a lot of their sermons that he'll be a, a doctor to you. He'll be... Uh, a lawyer in a courtroom. He, he'll, 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 he'll be bread when you're hungry. He'll water when you're thirsty. He, he'll be a mother for you when your mother is gone, a father for you when your father's dead and gone. He'll be a, a friend that sticks closer than any brother. Maybe that's why they said that, 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 that when you can't afford your, your prescription at the pharmacy, he's got more medicine in the hem of his garment than all of the pharmacists put together. I don't know if that's the kind of relationship where that uh, Uzziah uh, and, and Isaiah had, but but it, it, it's 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 feasible or uh, it's reasonable to think that think along those lines because it was when Uzziah died that Isaiah saw the Lord. And I can speak personally that, that there have been people in my life that, that, that I really didn't uh, uh, see the Lord as being the source of my strength, where my help came from, until God moved those people out of my life. 
There have been people that have come into my life that have helped me tremendously, but they were only there for a season. They were there for a brief moment. But the good thing about the Lord is he will be there with you always. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He's even a very present help in trouble, not just in times of trouble, but in the smack dab in the middle of trouble, the Lord is right there with you. Ask Daniel about it when he was in the lion den, wasn't the Lord uh, uh, right there with him. Ask the three Hebrew young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if the Lord was in that fiery furnace with them. Even the king that gave the command to have them thrown in the fire came out that morning and said, didn't I tell you all to throw in uh, three? And they said, yes, we carried out your order just as you commanded. As a matter of fact, King, the, the guys that did the, the carried out the order, that threw them in, they, the fire leaped over them and burned them up, but it didn't burn up the three Hebrews. And the, and the king said, I, I told you to throw in three, but look like I see a fourth one. And he looks like a son of a God. So, so the Lord, gee, that's one of those places where you can say, aha, I see where you're going. Everything points to Jesus. Okay, let's move on. Uh, after he sees the Lord, then the vision presents to Isaiah, above him stood seraphim. And each had six wings, with two wings they covered their face, two wings they covered their feet, with two wings they, they flew. At, 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 at least four wings they used in reverence to God. And with only two wings they used in service. Again, aha, I see where you're going. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, and, and one called to the other saying, holy Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. In other words, they are, they, they, they are letting us know that we ought to be able to see God in everything. In him we live, move, and have our being. He's where we were and left. He's where we are, and he's already where we're going. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent all at the same time. And the good thing about it, he has promised never to leave us, to walk alone. And, 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 and now as... Uh, they declare that the whole earth is full of his glory. And then uh, 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 the foundation of the threshold or the doorpost shook at his voice, uh, the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. In other words, something or somebody's life is getting ready to be shaken up. And, and you never learn to really live until your life has been shaken up. And God has a way that, that it, throughout each life, he has a way of shaking us up. Israel had gotten too content down in, even in slavery in Egypt until God shook some things up. We have had gotten too comfortable in sin in slavery to sin, in slavery to Satan, until God started shaking some things up in our lives. And that's a good thing when God shakes up some things because it leads us to the next transition in Isaiah's life. He says, woe is me for I'm lost or I'm undone. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Woe is me. He transitioned from his life being shaken. Well, let me go back to the beginning. He, 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 he transitioned from Uzziah's death to and his throne being vacated to seeing the Lord and the Lord sitting on his throne. And then he transitioned from there to in the vision to uh, the vision of the seraphims 
with six wings. They, the two wings, they covered their face. Two, they covered their feet. Two, they flew. They used the two in the service of the Lord. And, and they were declaring, holy, 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 the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Somebody from on high, somebody from the divine side had to come to the earthly side or the carnal side to inform Isaiah of really what was going on. And, 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 and I'm glad today that, 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 that the Lord has somebody waiting in the wings in the annals of time ready to answer the call and come and tell a dying world that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And he didn't just inform us of it, but he did something about our depraved condition. Another point where you ought to say, aha, I see where you're going. So now we're, we're, we're at the transition where we went through the next transition was the foundation of the door. Uh, shook, the threshold shook, um, the voice spoke, and smoke filled the temple, and, and uh, uh, in other words, some things were shaken up in Isaiah's life. Now we transition to Isaiah seeing himself. He could never have seen himself as a reflection from Uzziah, because Uzziah was a simple man like he was. But when he saw the Lord, that's when he was able to see himself. The moon, for instance, is simply a reflection of the sun. The sun is much larger than the moon. Without the sun shining light, there would be no reflection from the moon. And there would be darkness. Now, there, there's somebody that came down through 42 generations, got off in a little town called Bethlehem. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I, I'm trying to create these, aha, I see where you're going moments as we transition through Isaiah's life. Isaiah was able to see himself because he was able to see the Lord. You cannot be a light of the world until you see the light from on high and understand that the only way that you can shine is that you are a reflection of him, of the greater light. And, 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 and look at how, how, how it flows so neatly together. Most of the time we spend uh, time looking at the problems or the faults of other folks. In, in other words, we spend so much time trying to sweep around other folks' front door and not cleaning around our own. We spend so much time trying to get the little splinter out of other folks' eyes instead of trying to do something about the beam in our own eyes. But when Isaiah saw the Lord, that was flipped. He saw himself first. He saw his own depraved condition first, and then he saw the conditions of the people around him that he lived among. And then he was not left in that depraved condition. Then, in verse 6, then one of the seraphims flew to him, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongues off from off the altar. God has around his throne what we need to clean us up. And he has employed divine ministers, whether they be angels or whether they be his only begotten son, to come and clean us up. That, that's the only way. It, it, it's a top-down situation. You can't get cleaned up by any means that you do or some other person does. It has to come from above. It has to be brought about by a divine intervention. Another one of those moments. Aha! 
I see where you're going. So the seraphims came. And then verse 7 says, he touched my mouth and said, this is, uh, this has touched your lips. And, and, and with what was taken off of the altar that was too hot for the angel to touch. They had to take uh, tongues and transport it, the, the coal of fire, from the altar of God. And, and it touched Isaiah's lips. Woo! I just had one of those, aha, I see where you're going moments. This, this burning from the altar of God taken by an angel that the, it was too hot for the angel to touch. And the angel took the tongue and brought it and touched Isaiah's lips. What do we use our lips for? The main function is to communicate. And God, once we see the Lord, we stop using it to bite on, to backbite, to lie on folks, and we use it to start telling folks what thus said the Lord. Jeremiah said, it's like a fire shut up in my bone, and I couldn't hold my peace. I had to tell somebody. Even though the way they were persecuting me I had to go back and tell them about the goodness of the Lord because it was burning inside of me and I couldn't hold my peace. So, 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 so the, he touched my mouth, Isaiah says, and behold, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away. Ooh-wee. And your sin atoned for. Aha. Uh -huh. and, and, and last week I alluded to the fact that I didn't do a good job of it about how uh, 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 there has to be a sacrifice in order to, 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 for us to be made better. And it was on Calvary where Jesus died to atone for our sins, to set us in a right relationship with God. God tested Abraham. He said, you've been bugging me about a son to be an heir, and, 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 and I, you, 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 you might have got close to getting to me a few times, but I held out. I didn't give it to you. I didn't give that son to you until I decided. And when I decided, I gave him to you. And now I'm asking you to give him back. And then when, 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 when Abraham got up on the mountain and drew the knife back, he built the altar and started to fight and drew the knife back, and God told an angel to talk to him, tell him what he's about to do, don't do it, because I was just testing him to see if he really trusted me. And now I see that he trusts me. And I, he knows that I, I will provide. And, and, and you're not really ready for what God has for you until you have already decided that, that if he decides to take it back, you will give him back to him. Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. So he says, the angel tells him, your guilt is taken away and your sins, your sin atoned for. Now, after hearing the voice of the Lord, now Isaiah is ready. He's transitioned through some phases in his life. And now he's ready to hear the voice of the Lord. 
And the Lord probably had been making this statement in Isaiah's presence for years. And I say that because looking back over my life, I know the Lord was calling me a long time before I answered. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Aha! Another one of those moments. There's something that has taken place in all of our lives. We get a glimpse of what was coming through the life of Isaiah. But what really was being pointed forward to by Isaiah is found in Jesus. It was Isaiah that said, I think it's in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And in his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah, in essence, talked about, uh, a little bit after the sixth chapter, he talked about how, 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 uh, there was a son being uh, given, a child born and a son given. And this child would be as much man as we are and as much God as God is. And his name would be wonderful, mighty counselor, mighty God. And here's the one that I wanted to point, pull out. His name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And it was on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary that Emmanuel showed up. They didn't recognize him in the Garden of Gethsemane. When sweat blood flowed out like blood. But on Calvary on that cross, blood flowed out like water and gathered into a puddle, a stream beneath the cross. And it became a place where all sinners can plunge beneath and lose their guilt this stain. And, and I can hear that voice from, from Isaiah's time saying, your guilt has been taken away. Your sins have, is atoned for. And that's letting me know it's time for me to close this. One Friday, he died. And if I was at Mount Sinai right now, I would I would look back at Reverend Brazel and say, didn't he die? And he would holler out, he died. And, 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 and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, he grows with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand power to clean us up, power to transform our lives, power to make us new creatures. He will make our lives brand new. Just have to trust him. Trust in his salvific work. Trust in his sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit that we may reach the glorified stage of being together with God. Emmanuel means God with us. They're working so that we can be with him. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I pray that this do-over went much better than the first time around. Thank God for second chances in life. And thank God for, for shaking up our lives to get us to the point where we are more useful to him. And we can say, Lord, here am I. Send me. And we're simply following in the steps of our Christ. We're being a help to others as he has been more than all of the help that we need, if that makes sense. Thank you for joining us today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the second chance to do over this sermon. And we pray that this time 
it would serve your purpose and, and, and that I wasn't uh, discombobulated by what was going on in my life. But maybe that was necessary so that I could understand better of how you shakes up our lives in order to make us better and more useful to you. Thank you so much. Help your people to allow you to order their steps or order our steps in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again uh, very soon. Uh, uh, if we don't see you, then we, we will be together spiritually. And we will do what we did this week. We'll gather uh, uh, the way we have been ever since the coronavirus has been in our midst and we will worship together. I heard a preacher say yesterday that uh, the walls is where we used to meet when we should have been meeting in our hearts all alone in those walls. So be safe. Remember to wear a protective uh, mask. Remember to uh, distance yourself at least six feet and as much as you can. And remember to wash your hands often and by doing those simple things you just might save somebody's life and the life that you save just might be your own so be careful God will see us through this COVID-19 uh, transition in our lives Take care. So long. Bye-bye.